He has come to make his blessings known far as the curse is found. For those of you who are our guests this morning, I do want to welcome you. My name is Ian. I'm one of the interim pastors here at Western Hills Church. And our family just recently moved here from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Um, but we are so grateful to be in the Bay. because We believe the good news of Jesus Christ is worth declaring, is worth celebrating, is worth making a big deal about wherever we are, wherever we go. And this morning is an opportunity for us to get our hearts once again wrapped around the greatest news ever. And there truly is something wrong in the world today. It's broken. There is a curse. But this morning we are remembering, we are celebrating that there is hope for it to be healed. And his name is Jesus. And so would you take your Bible and go to Luke chapter two, our Christmas meditation this morning. This is going to come from a few words in the traditional Christmas story, but this whole story is worth reading in its entirety. And so I want to read to you this morning from Luke chapter two. This is the word of God. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they with great fear. And the angel said to them, fear not. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. Praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. When they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. May the Lord add his blessing in this meditation by the power of the Holy Spirit. Christmas is supposed to be the most wonderful time of the year. And I got to be honest, other than summer vacation, this is the best time of the year. I mean, in fact, we are living right in the middle of my favorite three days on the calendar year. Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and play with all my kids' toys the day after. I mean, these are wonderful days. And one of the things we often do to try to capture this, this, this wonderful time of the year is create both church and family traditions that, that help us celebrate the true meaning of Christmas, that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Oh, you have family traditions. We all have family traditions. In fact, some of you are here with your family today because you're, you're celebrating some of those traditions today. One of our family traditions is as we decorate for the, for the Advent season, we set up a nativity set that was handed to my wife, Rachel, from her grandparents. And they have these beautiful, ornate, hand-carved, olive wood nativity set figurines from Israel. And our kids would love them. 
And, you know, my wife is a very practical woman. She's like, these aren't here for a museum. These are here to be enjoyed. And so our kids would play with them. And I remember when our old, once one, one particular Christmas season, I remember when our oldest son was just a wee child. He's playing with Joseph and he's playing with baby Jesus and he's having a conversation between pieces. And I remember him saying very clearly, I am Jesus, king of babies. I never forget that moment. But you know what they say, out of the mouth of babes. I am Jesus, king of babies. In part, he was saying something that was at the heart of Christmas, whether he knew it or not. Christmas is not just about a virgin-born baby in a manger. Christmas is about a savior king, a king who came from heaven to earth to bring peace on earth by occupying the throne of human hearts. So on that first Christmas, the angels proclaimed what this child was sent to do this child was sent to bring peace on earth in jesus the prince of peace the prince of peace was finally here this this emmanuel god with us mighty god everlasting father Prince of Peace had finally arrived. And what I want us to think about this morning for just a few moments, how this Jesus, this Prince of Peace, was sent to deliver the missing peace in each one of our lives. Let's talk about this missing peace. For some, especially during Christmas, life can be but an experience of peace on earth. <laughs> Everyone's running around, feeling rushed, overwhelmed, and harried. I mean, some of you have, have made your way into this Christmas morning worship service worried. Worried if, if you had enough time to get all the shopping and all the hosting and all the traveling and all the preparations done for your family celebrations. Some of us, if we're on, honest, we, we tend to feel a little guilty this time of year because we're reminded during this time when families are supposed to be together that tensions exist in some of our relationships. Let's be honest, we're not only worried and guilty, some of us are a little sad because this time of year we're reminded that there are certain people that we'd love to be spending this season with who are no longer with us. Worried. Guilty. Sad. Surely doesn't sound like the most wonderful time of the year, does it? Our hearts can get tangled. I think it's fair to say that Christmas can be a mixed emotions, can it not? A time where we know it's supposed to be wonderful, but it's also a time where we feel like there's just something in our lives, something in our world that isn't quite right. Deep down inside, we know that something is missing. Something. It's not right. And we also know that that thing that's missing surely won't be found under the Christmas tree. That's you this morning. Realize this. You are not alone. There's a longing for peace in every single one of our hearts. And if we're honest, we spend many of our days trying to fill that void, trying to find that peace wherever we hope find it. We try relationships and careers and money and stuff. Because we feel this lack of fulfillment, we hope that if we, if we just had a larger salary or a bigger house or a nicer car or better politicians, or if the Eagles would just win another Super Bowl, maybe then, maybe then we would be fulfilled. Maybe then our souls would be Maybe then that, that thing that feels like it's missing and, and it's action we're, we're grasping for, that maybe we'll get it. We all know that deep down inside, we long for this peace. We know it. We feel it. But we can never seem to quite get our head around it. Why is that? As a friend, I'm here to tell you this morning that the reason why it seems like it's far out of our grasp it's because that peace that we're looking for will never be found from anything on this earth 
let me say it this way. Peace on earth doesn't come from anything on earth. Peace on earth can only come from heaven. And that's why God sent his son from heaven to earth to be the missing peace. You see, Jesus knows exactly what's missing. He's not only the savior king, he's the creator. He made everything. He made you. He made me. He knows, he knows exactly what makes life. He knows exactly what life's for, and he knows exactly what fulfills and brings us the stability and the meaning and the purpose that we're all longing for. So Jesus is the missing piece that fills our soul with peace. We were made to, to know and experience peace with God. But, but if we're honest, we're, we, we need to realize the fact that our sin and rebellion separates us from that peace. In fact, rather than experiencing peace with God, the scriptures are quite clear that on account of our sin, we deserve to experience the judgment of God. You say, that's bad news. This is Christmas. What are you doing to us here this morning? You know, this is a time of year where many couples get engaged. I remember when I was in college, getting engaged. They're going out to, to look for the diamond. And they go to a jeweler, and any good jeweler, if they want to really showcase the beauty of a diamond that they're trying to sell a young man, here's what they'll do. They'll take a black velvet cloth, and they'll roll it out on the counter, and then they'll take the diamond and place it on the black velvet. Why? Because against the dark backdrop of the velvet cloth, the shining beauty of the diamond and all of its dimensions can be seen and celebrated and valued. If we ignore the dark reality of why Jesus came to this earth to be our missing piece, if we ignore the dark reality that the reason why Jesus came is because we don't have it all together, if we ignore the dark reality that our human sin and rebellion is the cause for the brokenness and the chaos out there and in here, then we would fail to see the beauty and the glory, the value of the virgin-born Son of God who came to be our Prince of Peace. And so Jesus came, not because God is sentimental. Jesus came because God loves to save sinners. The missing peace. Second, consider this this morning, the possibility of this peace. That missing peace, he restored for us. That's why Jesus came. The message of Christmas is that Jesus came down to us and has done everything necessary to restore this peace that's missing. Peace is possible because Jesus was given to make it possible. In fact, the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, here's how Jesus did it. Jesus suffered once for sin, the righteous one for the unrighteous ones that he might bring us to God. God is the missing piece in our lives. And Jesus, the son of God, came to restore that relationship with God. You see, whether we realize it or not, our, big, our biggest problems in life come because of distance from God. But Jesus came to close the gap. What a beautiful picture that God doesn't want to stay away from us. What a beautiful picture that God's not just absolutely had it with us. What a beautiful picture that God has not abandoned us. He left the came to this broken world. Why? Because he wanted us back where we belong. You see, Jesus was sent because God wants us with him. He wants that peace, that void filled with him. So Jesus lived the life we could not live to be our righteousness. He died the death we deserve to die on the cross to be our forgiveness. He rose from the dead triumphantly, making it crystal clear with an exclamation point in real time human history that this life is not all that there is, that we can be right with God now and forever 
through him. You see, the Christmas message is not ultimately about the Christmas cradle. The Christmas cradle is ultimately about the mercy of the Christian cross. The good news of Christmas is that all who repent of their sin and come to Jesus by faith can have peace with God on earth and in heaven forever. Church, is that the best news ever? What's missing, what we long for, can be restored. Peace with God is possible. Final thought. This peace is very costly. The price of peace. This peace isn't cheap. It's an expensive gift. It wasn't purchased at the Dollar General, okay? This is an expensive, extravagant, no expense spared kind of gift. But here's the best deal you'll hear about this Christmas, and you won't find on Amazon Prime under a lightning deal. Jesus paid the price for this peace with his own life, and he offers it to us for free. If you're new to the church, we have a word for that. It's called grace. God gives us what we have earned, what we do not deserve, because he loves us with an infinite unstoppable, irresistible love. So Jesus paid the price. He's purchased the gift and he extended the missing piece to us this morning. This Christmas, would you see that this gift that he's provided for us, this, this, this gift that he's purchased at great price, would you see that he offers it to us? And if you've already received the first time, celebrate it, treasure it, be renewed in your gratitude that Jesus Christ is your missing piece. Love him more today than you did yesterday. Be more grateful today than you were the day before. May this Christmas be a renewal of your gratitude that God so loved you that he gave you his one and only son to be your missing piece. If you've never received the gift, would you receive it this morning? Would you, would you extend your hands toward his and receive this gift that he has purchased for you? A peace that will stabilize you in this life. A peace that will save you from your sin. A peace that will transform you inside out. Move you to live your life for the purpose that you were made to glorify God and enjoy him forever as you represent him as an image bearer on this earth. And then when he returns, he will make all things new. And where he is, you will be forever and ever. That sounds like a Merry Christmas, doesn't it? Jesus Christ, the missing piece. He's provided for us an unspeakable gift. Would you treasure it? Would you receive it? And by the grace of God, will we go out on a mountain and share it? That Jesus Christ has come. And he's exactly what we, San Mateo, the Silicon Valley, and all the world needs more than anything. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this. Good news. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, truly is the Prince of Peace. And God, whether we're feeling the chaos most inside our hearts, are sensing the chaos most outside all around us in this world, I pray this morning you would help each of us to celebrate this Merry Christmas with a realization that there's only one who can restore the peace. There's only one who can fill the void that we all sense inside, whether apparently or from time to time. Would you help us to see that your son Jesus is not just a cute baby in a manger, but the Savior King who lived and died and rose that we might be saved now and forevermore? God, would you help us this, this season? to be a little bit more convinced, a little bit more aware that peace on earth 
will never come from anything on this earth. Peace on earth will only come from the maker of heaven and earth who came to restore, to renew, and to make all things new. Your son, our savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray, in whose name we sing, in his name we go and tell it on the mountain that he is like none other. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together.